Hey, hey, Shacky Bros. Folks, it's Dunlap. How you doing out there in podcast l- listener land? So everybody out there in l- listen makes one of these too, right? Yes. We don't listen to theirs, so. though. Nope. No. Who has the time? I barely got time to do this, to talk on it, let alone listen to somebody else talk at me. Listen, if any of you out there have a podcast and li- and listen to ours, go ahead and let us know what your podcast is. I ain't going to listen to it. I ain't got time. No offense to say right now. I ain't got time to do it. Hey, Jackie, I don't mean to undercut you here. But you going to tell me that you ain't got one hour a day to listen to a, a, a friend fan's podcast. All right. If they read Lola Moore on there and just read it, yeah, I'll listen to an hour of that. Yeah. That's a book on tape. Yeah. the same. I, I got some of them. Yeah. That's not a podcast. Well, it got. I didn't know about those till so many years ago. You know, print some of them. You get old people books. got big print, but then they're half as big, half as thick. Lug that around. Uh, when you put it on your shelf, it takes up twice as much room. And uh, regular books, just print getting too, you know, just hard for me to make out. I admit, you know, it's hard. It ain't got the right kind of reading glass or whatever it takes. But them, uh, what do you call books on tape? They, yeah. I think they call them audio books now. I whatever it is, yeah. Because they don't make them for tapes. They got, you know, different. Sometimes people you know who they are. Sometimes people you don't know. Uh, reading every little more book there is, I reckon. A lot of them, anyway. So some of the old ones I can't read like I used to. It's almost like reading them again with a friend, somebody different, you know, in in your head, reading it. Do you imagine that it's your friend reading it to you? Well, I ain't my enemy. If I don't imagine that. I don't want to listen to a little more book read by someone I don't like. Like ISIS? Yeah, I ain't going to listen to that. I ain't going to listen to it. I ain't going to read every little... They put out as many books on tape as is. Uh, I ain't going to listen to it once. Well, Jackie, I imagine most Americans stand behind you in this brave stance. We will not listen to your audio books, nope. ISIS. Nope. I ain't looking at the videos. I ain't going to listen to uh, uh, books. I'll read them. Any of that stuff. Nothing. Keep them to yourself. Yeah. They wouldn't like Lula more anyway. What the hell? They wouldn't know. Well, that's racist. People, they know what a horse is. Everybody knows what a horse is. I didn't say you didn't know what a horse was. Did I say yet? I said they ain't reading. They may even know what Lula more is, but I'm I'm too busy cutting someone's head off to read any of that. I would love to take a poll of ISIS members and just find out what the percentage is that knows who Louis Lamour is. Over oh, there. hell, don't take no poll. You can't believe what to say anyhow. Well, why would they lie on a poll about Louis Lamour? Why would they tell the truth about it? They don't tell the truth about nothing. They might about Louis Lamour. Maybe nobody's taking the time. Maybe this is a bridge. I ain't asking. To peace. I, I'm not asking ISIS something. I don't want no peace. I want to go war, finish them off, get rid of them. Of course, again, you know, that ain't going to happen until we get a decent president in office that considers them a threat, as they are. You think Obama knows what Louis Lamour is? Hell, I don't know. I ain't going to speak on his behalf. Wouldn't wouldn't do it if you asked me to, no. If you warm ISIS up with a poll about Louis Lamour, do you know who Louis Lamour is? Check one, yes. Check two, No. Do you know what a horse is? Check yes one, check two no. They know what a horse, everybody knows what a damn horse is. May have a different name for it, a different language, but a horse, yeah, everybody knows what a horse. Horse Which is a horse. start them off. You, did you just quote the Mr. Ed theme song? What? You just said a horse is a horse. It is. Is that all you know about horses? Is it comes from the Mr. Ed theme no, song? No, I know we're about horses. Had a horse grow up, up around horses all my life in the barn, everywhere else. I know what a horse is. No, everything is no about you know most horses anyway. You need to know. So you know that a horse is a horse. I just said it, didn't I? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 
So what I'm saying is you could go to the I, warm them up with questions like that and then get. I don't want the only way I want to warm them up is with a rocket up or behind. That's it. But you trick them, and at the end, you know, like, t- what's your favorite Lula Moore novel? And they tell you that, and then you're like, where's your secret base of operations? And then they tell you that. You know how tired you get. By the end, you're filling out a survey or something. You just want it to be over with. I think we could get some information. Well, Again, we are just spitballing ideas. Probably in the first five minutes of this podcast, come up with 100% more usable ideas in the Obama well, administration. Well, yeah, I'll admit to that. Now, I ain't saying uh, uh, I'd, I'd do all these, but, yeah, it's easy. Just, you and I talk for an hour about ISIS. We'll have all sorts of ways, and we're putting it out there. I don't mind who. You take credit, oh, Obama. Go ahead. Take it. Go on. You can have credit. Just take care of business. Do your damn job. I don't care who gets credit. Just uh, take them out. Get up. Enough of this. Would you say you went right to the source and asked a horse? What? Did he give you an answer that you'll endorse? What? I looked up the lyrics of the Mr. Ed theme song. And I'm a little confused. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. That's killing time there when you write a song, repeat the same thing over and over again. He's just trying to fill up times. Back in t- TV theme song, you only had so long. You know, they're always short. Some some of them you want to, you know, be over with right off the top of it, you know. But then there's some songs you like, like old chairs, you won't keep singing that. And it's over for, you know, for you know it. And then it says, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. But you can talk to a horse. Anybody can talk to a horse. You can, you can give a horse orders. You don't talk to him. You don't talk to him. But you, you can go get up get, and say, hey, how you doing, horse? No, you going to get up on there. Yeah. You know, whatever it is you're trying to do with them. Well, our methods of talking to horses may be different, but... We both agree that one can speak to a horse. You whisper. Remember, horse whisper. Horse whisper. Horse whisper. So Everybody th- rip that man off. I'll tell you this. What was it? Dog whisper. Mm-hmm. Whatever thing. Every kind of animal rip, ripped him off. He was original. I don't know if he's still living or not. He's still living. The horse whisper? Yeah. The real one? The one, yes, the real one. Is that based on a real story? Yes, it's based. Man knew how to get a horse to do anything by being, you know, some people, you know, whip a horse or take to hurting an animal or something like that. And he'd just be like. And the animal going to respond much better to him that way than, you know. Now, you could be firm with animals. I ain't saying they don't deserve, you know, to get a little bit. Now, you don't, everything you want to teach them, you, you whip them. That's pitiful. That's a carriage way, I think. Now, this part of the song I agree with. People yakety yak a streak. Is that real? I think these lyrics may be off base. What? And waste your time a day. That's true. People will talk and talk. Yeah. And it gets annoying. I know. Yeah. And waste all your time of day. I know how it is, yeah. But Mr. Ed will never speak unless he has something to say. Good on you, Mr. Ed. I don't know if that's true. You see some of them shows. No, he's some just that, going on he like any other sh- asshole. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't wouldn't say it that way with the language, but I mean, he after a while, novelty wears off. How many seasons that show last? Everybody knows what it is, and that's just based on Francis Mule. Francis Mule come on first. They that, rip him in off, the movie. Rip just him like off. they ripped off the Horse Whisperer. Yeah, anything with a horse, somebody gonna. I, I don't know. It must be. Patent laws or licenses. I don't know all that law. You think stuff. maybe a horse, there's some sort of clause where a horse. I don't. It seems that way if you look at all of it. Yeah. Because people do rip off horse things. Yeah. Everybody, like I said, the horse whisper was only one. There's a book on that. And I guess it made a, old Robert Reffers uh, made a movie. Uh, and then from there on, every TV show on Animal Planet, every time I saw one come on, I said, well, I hope I hope he's getting paid for that. Otherwise. You never heard of a talking horse? What? Well, I'm talking to about, what What are you talking and about? And then he goes, I am Mr. Ed. He sings on it, yeah. That's pretty good. They yeah, redeem right. themselves I, by I, the end of it. I don't have nothing against Mr. Ed. Like I said, after a while, just get the novelty wears off. 
<laughs> to our younger viewers, Mr. Ed was a television show in the fucking 50s, I think. Hey, hey. Early 60s, okay, maybe. Man. I don't know. I'd say JFK was still alive. Black and, and white, to yeah. enjoy that television show before he met his... It wasn't too long ago. We end. was talking about it before. If you listen to this, you ought to know how Mr. Ed is. Because remember, we asked everybody out there for, if he ever get up on writing. Couldn't remember. We could not remember. And it turns out somebody said they did. Of course, I don't know if they tell the truth or not. I didn't research it. I ain't yeah, got they time. did. Somebody got on. I can't remember who it was. He said that. Got on our Facebook and answered our question. And said, yes, they did occasionally ride Mr. Ed around. Well, he didn't say occasionally, I don't think. I think he gave one example. One, one time. time they one rode time. Mr. Ed. The meaning is what, you know, you wouldn't want him on it's, that. It's, it's uh, just a slap in the face. Why don't you take a car? Yeah. There's no reason you have to ride Mr. Ed. I guess they contrived some. Because if you have a show about a talking horse, it's like you bring a gun out on stage in a play. You got a, a horse that talks in a play. By the end of it, you won't see somebody ride it. That old uh, law, That's what theater I, law. Personally, I like seeing a Western. I want to see a horse do what it normally does. I like just a horse being a horse. I don't don't have to do all the talk, do all that stuff. Now, Mister, I know it's silly, just funny for youngins or whatever, and it's all right. Like I said, not with the war off of me. After a while, yeah, he can talk, so what? You know, I guess I turned out before he started well, riding that's him. be a big... Okay, you say you grew up with horses... Wouldn't that be a big help if the horse could talk? How, what a help? What do you mean? Well, like, okay, just off the top of my head, you don't know, like, if your horse gets sick, somebody's going to, you know, you got, it's going to affect <laughs> when you bring in the, the wheat crop what? or something. The what? You don't know when your horse is sick. He can you just tell drop when dead. a horse is sick, looking in the eyes, the ears, everywhere else. You know, something. How right much easier one. is it to go? How you feeling? I'm doing okay. Horse may be lying too. You don't know. You said that won't be easier. It may be a hundred times worse. You don't know. What I, you know, we had a horse back in old Mickey Mouse horse. We loved him. He was a good horse, but we also had old old Bradley. Oh, uh, Mister Bradley is old Mister Bradley. What you call the other horse? We had him for a while. And he's honorary as could be. You know, kick ass it, didn't want to do something, get all riled up. You know, he wasn't like old Mickey Mouse horse. He's, you know, if he could talk, he'd probably be lying to you, running his mouth at you. And imagine them two horse, one good, one's bad, both of them talking to each other. Every time you go on a barn, you know, if I want to hear people holler and go on talk about whatever, I stay in the house. When you go out to the barn, you don't want to hear none of that. It's just you and the animals. But I ain't going to listen to two horses in there bicker and few with one another. I ain't going to do it. Well, maybe you could get rid of uh, old Mr. Bradley and get in another uh, good horse, like Mickey Mouse a horse. Man, you don't know. You... Maybe Mr. Bradley the horse was so ornery because he was making it do a bunch of work for free. I made the, it didn't do any work at the uh, uh, Mickey Mouse a horse. It didn't do. They both did the same things. A pull a plow, pull a wagon, you know, whatever. Well, maybe one had more dignity. Well, one of them was ornery, one of them didn't mind. Okay, you you up on the porch of your old, uh, what year was this, 1800s? Oh, hell yeah. Your 1800s 1800. shack. It wasn't no 1800s. And no. you see some smoke coming from the end of the patch of vegetables. What? And you say, what's on fire? Horse, go out there and see what's on fire. Horse say, okay. And horse, go all the way down, come back, report to you. Like, it's nothing. Somebody threw a cigarette out. I, I stomped on it. See, that's handy. Horse, go get the mail. Okay. That's a dog. Dog don't have to talk to do all that stuff. You got a dog for that. Dog, go get the mail. Dog, get the newspaper. Bring so it you'd in. rather have a talking dog that goes and I gets don't the need, mail. Look, I don't mind watching a show, like I said, for a little while, animals talk. It's funny. Uh, baby pig, all of them. All of them animals, you know, it's, it's cute for a little bit. But, I mean, I want to see. I like animals the way they are. I don't need you to make them talk or do anything magic or special, whatever. Uh, I like them just the way they are in real life. That's, that's to me, that's a miracle right there. You go out and milk a cow, that's a miracle in itself. That's God's gift, you know, make an animal like that provide for you. And in fact, you know, that's enough. It, it, it don't need to talk. But if it did and you went out there and started milking it and the cow goes, ooh, hoo <laughs> What? Your hands are cold, oh, Mr. Broyles. Yeah, I hope nobody wants to. Uh-uh. 
Well, which animal then would you like to talk to? I most? don't want any of a parrot. Parrot already talked. Yeah, that's fine. Like well, cherry. that's defeating the purpose. No, of it ain't. Question. I like animals for what they do and what they are. I don't have to put something on them, make them ride a skateboard, make them do anything like talk, what it, wear sunglasses, or any of it to like it any better. I like them the way they are. Morris the cat, 100% better because he talks. He didn't really talk as in his mind. His mouth didn't move. Oh, like he's that. imagining that. I didn't know that. I thought he was really talking. No, he's just imagining that. Which, you so know, he's like having a, a fantasy as if he could talk. Oh, we call That's kind of like uh, Metallica's one video. What? That man can't talk. Look at my... I don't know where... Either that or your mind read a word called back in the back in the seventies. Everybody thought there's something to it, and then they realized what idiots they were. What tele tele telepathy? ESP. ESP. Yeah. People back in them days are idiots trying to bend spoons, moving the hands over it. Uh, uh, you know, reading each other's mind, bunch of bull. Morris couldn't be in Spoon. He couldn't read minds because he was always surprised. It was a commercial. I know it wasn't any of that stuff. I'm, you just put it out there. You said it's, it, it'd be like, you know, if whatever. He could read I said minds, it'd be like reading the mind. When she brought out the food, he was always surprised. If he could read minds, he'd know when the food was coming. Because she brought out the food, and he'd be, he was like, oh, dinner time, finally. Now, look, I like old Dr. Doolittle movies. Mm-hmm. Not the old Eddie Murphy ones. Not mm-hmm. the... The other one where he sang at the animals. He didn't and, really sing. Well, sing. whatever it was, talk, sing, whatever, dress up like that. He okay. always, to me, seemed like he's talking down to him. Well, I'll take two of these, call them in the morning or whatever. But, but those animals didn't talk back. That was all in his mind. You didn't hear them. Now, see, now that's entertainment. That, some people may think that's entertainment. I don't. I didn't care for it. Now, old Eddie Murphy, when he was, you know, making good movies, and did, you know, the animals talk back, and then animals, usually some other funny person, uh, Rocky or whoever, uh, talk back to him, and that was funny. But, you know, he's you know, about 90 minutes long. That's about all I can take of that. But, see, he's a doctor. See, this goes back to my original point. The best reason for animals to talk well, is to tell whole you story how they, they feel. That's all them animals come running to him. Out of the woods, because when they heard that there's a doctor, they finally understood what was going on. They could understand them. That's where they went to. See? Went to the doctor. I got a problem with my foot, my paw, whatever it is. Something's, you know, my tail ain't doing that. You'd go with him. He was the one that, you know, could listen to you. But they he's don't a good, have any money to pay. It's a good movie. I know that. They don't have no owners. That don't make no sense to me. They so pay him in... I ain't seen it in a long time. Maybe they address this uh, plot hole in Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doom. Well, like if you was a veterinarian and you never left the house to just, you know, wild animals wandering up telling you what's wrong with it, getting them checkups, you ain't going to have time to go down and make a living. Sound like a nightmare. Well, I know. Well, you need to get hired by uh, Smoky Bear Forest Service. They need to keep him on call to help all the little creatures of the forest what that's that's how i would do it i'd go to the smoky bear forest service and say hey i could talk to animals now first thing i'll laugh at you but if you say just bring, if you bring talking me to one. smoky bear right then why would he know you could well smoky bear also can talk see, well that's they, another animal that can see where a fire is and let you know see those are the two things because it's it's represented in other media well bear are makes- animals sick where is the fire? That's what animals can say to you. Yeah. That's the two top things we need animals to talk for. I don't care anything about it myself. I, I just like I said, it's it's a cute idea. It's funny, Mister Ed. I watch a couple of shows. That's about all I'm interested in. Now I seen old Doctor Doolittle uh, movies up till Ed Murphy quit doing them. I don't see. I mean, they ain't as funny about him. I don't think. But there's at least two or three he's in. Before it start, start with Hattie. I like, you know, they're still okay, but they ain't as good. Maybe Morris did have a ESP. If they ever made an all pet version of the X Men, he'd be a good Professor Xavier. I can't remember how many of the, how many Dr. Little movies they make. There's Eddie Murphy. And I think not. he just made two, and then, like, his daughter takes over for a straight to video yeah, three. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. I she, wait has for Eddie the, Murphy. she has the shining too. It's weird though, because you know, 
Eddie Murphy, everybody says, you know, everybody says he's funny, knows he's good, and I agree. I like Eddie Murphy when he's in good movies. But when they take him out of it, them animals is less as funny, too. Well, because he's not the kind of guy who is like, I'm the only one that's going to be funny in this motion picture. I'm going to step back and let this pig have a few yeah, good lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, the pig got plenty of time to do that in the one without him, but not as funny. Just, you know, Eddie Murphy brings that out of the animals, too. He lifts all boats. Yeah. Eddie Murphy movies. All boats rise. Boats. On the Eddie Murphy. Well, they're just talking about all the animals, different animals ride. talk to him. Uh, they talk to him funny in the ones he's in, the one he wasn't in. Not as funny, I didn't think. If he ever has a comeback or something, I hope they do a little in joke where, like, like that would have been good in uh, uh, what was the movie, the musical he did? He thought he was going to get an Oscar for it. And right. What's that name at? You don't know. Musical. But what they should have done is had, like, a bear or a pig, like, walk by and go, hey, how you doing? And he'd go, like, this ain't that, that movie. And well, then he would have got an Oscar, I'll bet. You said what they always said was that old W.C. Fields said, never work with an uh, animal or children. And Eddie Murphy did both. Same movie. Did did. Did damn good if I could, if I say so myself. Would you say Eddie Murphy's better than W. C. Fields? Well, yeah. I mean, he's not black and white anymore. That been a good. He'd been a good Doctor Doolittle. They didn't have no. He wouldn't. He'd be awful. He'd be worse Doctor Doolittle. Be drunk all the time, stumbling over him. No, <laughs> that's I mean, true. That's the problem with having W. C. Fields is. Dr. Doolittle, he'd be drunk and tripping over all the animals. Because you don't want to be, that's why alcoholics don't have a lot of pets. Eight. Underfoot, underfoot. First they die because yeah. they're off on a bender and they yep. come home and forgot to feed them. And then two, they just fall all the time. They got to give them away. Yeah. And they don't have any loyalty to their pets. Yeah, he. he you, what I was talking about, some people think they need to, to whip an animal and make it do what they want to instead of whisper. W.C. Field, he'd be one of them. He'd be, get the hell out of this, go on, you know, get out, you know. If he, like, in a movie, say he inherited his his great aunt's house or whatever, she'd be in there. Mm-hmm. But also, in order to get all the money, you got to have all them giraffes, zebras, all, all them animals in the house with you. That sounds pretty good, actually. It'd be funny, but still, it'd be, you Mean. know, he would be good, yeah. He'd be a good, if he was still alive today, if they offered him, uh, uh, what, what's it called? We own a zoo. We got a zoo. Look at our zoo. Huh? We got a zoo now. I don't know. It's He'd be good in that. But we yeah, bought a zoo, W.C. Fields. I, I don't, yeah. I don't, hey. I'd watch it. Yeah, it'd be funny. I don't know how W.C. Fields sounds anymore. He'd be trying to ha- figure out how to sell all the animals. Oh, hey. How would you like to buy a giraffe? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. That's pretty close, right? Well. Oh, there's too many possums. I really forgot how he sounds. I I couldn't tell you. Like kind of like penguin like you're doing? Like penguin, yeah. Wow, wow, too many. That's him. That's him right there. The penguins are what I always think of, him. Yeah, I can't remember how a penguin sounds either. To our younger viewers, WC viewers, listeners, ah, screw it. Hey, look at there. You see him? Well, open your damn eyes in. It's the old-timey country down-home Red State Update podcast and them. Coming to you from a bunker underneath Jackie's Market in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And here they are, both of them. Hey, hey, it's Jackie Bros. Folks, you got Dunlap. Sitting right next to Jackie. Jackie, my right hand man. I'm seated to his right. That's weird. Wow. I didn't figure this out. If we didn't do our sponsors before. We've fallen into a pattern where we, we come on and we talk nonsense for, oh, about 20 minutes. And we kill another 20 minutes talking about our sponsors. Then. 
we play the theme song, and then we do the news for as long as we can stand. Today, we fooled you. All right. We did. We talked about the nonsense for 20 minutes, and then the theme song. I forgot to do my sponsor. Now we got to do the sponsor. I forgot. I, I'll do mine. I forgot all about it. Get okay. Talk about it. You get to talk about horses and animals and things like that. Out in, uh, Eddie Murphy. I'll, Go all night. Yeah, yeah. That's some of my favorite things right there. All, all together. But my sponsor this week, uh, good sponsor, brand new to, to our, our podcast. And hope we'll come back and do some more on our podcast. Podcast. He is uh, uh, Christ in Cakes. You seen that up on the square? You passed it a few times. Ain't you done that? Christ in Cakes. I have seen. It's weird when you say my name out loud like that. I don't know why it threw me. Why? I have seen Christ in Cakes. Now, is it Christ in Cakes? I can't remember the sign. Is it I N? It's I N. Like yeah. Christ is in the cakes. It's I N. That's on the sign out front. That's what it's supposed to be. But on the little many things, they had so many printed up, messed up, and it's just got the apostrophe in apostrophe, like oh. Christ in. You know, rock. Christ and cakes. Yeah, yeah, that's so rock and roll, Christ and cakes. But you know, they want to be Christ in cakes, and I will tell you why they. A good Christian a couple, uh, been been in Murphy Bell for years. Y'all know uh, uh, Mister uh, Mister Bill and and Dolly Gramblish. Don't you, you remember them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill and Dolly Gramblies. Gramblies is Gramblies, G yeah. R A M L. E E S. I can't remember how you spell the, it. The Gramleys. Good, nice Christian. Bill and Dolly. Let me write that down. Nice, good, uh, uh, Chris family. Been been in in town for years. Uh, used to own a little uh, market. Got tore down due to circumstances here in this town. But now they own. It was a market, but it wasn't a market kind of like I have. Did not. It was what would you call it? more of a tourist place? Kind of a boutique off a of square. They had. Uh, it was made like Tennessee stuff on it, like yeah, if you like come you touristy little... stuff. Nothing against it; they had a good store, you know. But you know, the they price... had jewelry boxes that played Rocky Top, and they'd have little uh, pecan cakes in the shape of uh, UTT. Yeah, things like that. Now they still got those cakes, but they're a little bigger now. They, they got Christ in cakes, brand new little store. Opened they got up. rid of all the tchotchkes. Yeah, all the tourist stuff, and now it is just just good uh, bakery, delicious basically. bakery. Uh, Bill and Dolly Gramleys, uh, Christ in Cakes. Dolly Gramleys, she always just a great cook. Bring things to church, uh, have things left over. Come by store, just melt in your mouth. Just she makes some all little sweet things, all sorts of fun little knickknack stuff like that. She good at that. But now they, you know, going into business, and the reason they call it Christ in Cakes is because, as you know. Uh, like I said, you know, she brings things to church. They're churchgoers Wednesday, uh, 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 Sundays, and Saturdays. Uh, she does all sorts of runs around. I don't know how many different Christian programs she's involved in, raising money uh, for this or that, uh, help help with the church. Uh, they just reach out to the community through Christ all the lives because Christ is in their lives, and mm -hmm. and they she makes them cakes, and you know she makes them cakes with love, and everything they said they know about love got they learn through the love of Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. So if they if she got her hands uh, digging and then in the eggs and flying, you know kneading the dough and all that stuff, that's Jesus come through right there. So it's Christ in them cakes as well. There's nothing actually in there that like they didn't hide. Hide? What you? Like a little, uh, like a piece of the Bible, like at the bottom of the Coley's snack food. No, bags. it ain't nothing like it. It's just in the name. You get. It's not a picture of Jesus or a small ceramic. Figurine. They live their lives through the good Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Miss Miss Gremlins do, and 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 they. They got Christ in their lives, so you got Christ in in, no, in their cakes, you know. So it's Christ in cakes. So if you eat that cake, then you got a little Christ in you. Well, yeah, it's not communion or anything like that. It ain't, you know. It's not. This is not officially endorsed by any uh, church. No, no. It's just, no. Just, it's communion. It's just, just, a, just nice, a delicious cake. Uh, the good Christian couple making good, delicious uh, Christian cakes is, is the way... Uh, they like to describe it, and I, I, the way I like to eat it, because it's good. They make the cupcakes, all 
big cakes, you know, whatever, ever donuts even. They even got some donut days they call down there. Yeah. They got some cakes they got donuts in. Like you bake the donut and they put the donut in oh, the cake. Oh, she come up with every which way you could make something sweet taste good. Yeah, she she does it. So uh, Christ in Cajun, they'll, they'll do catering. Uh, they'll do, you know, any events, anything you got going on you need a cake for, that's who you go to. You know you're going to get a cake made with love, a uh, good Christian love. Christ and Cakes, uh, give us $25, and uh, they're, they're our sponsor of this, this, on this one. Well, that sounds, that sounds wonderful, Jack. You yeah, got good a good sponsor, yeah. You got a big uh, a Christian bakery. Well, yeah. I don't know about big, but, you know, it's... Yeah. A small Christian bakery. Yeah, yeah. Christ in the name of the bakery. Christ in, I-N, cakes. Not like Christ on the menu, on the, on the sign on the store. Yeah. Christ in cakes. On the sign, in the cakes, everywhere. Well, yeah. Saying that they will cater your business, uh, your luncheon, your wedding... I'm not stuff. making a big stink of like, oh, but except if you're gay. And down here in Murfreesboro in the South, uh, especially with all that's going on in Indiana, I think that is refreshing and good well, on them. Now, I, you brought that up, and I'm glad you did because there's something they, they will serve. For the, you know, that's become just a big deal now. You can't make a cake these days not knowing who's going to end up eating it. You know what I'm saying? That's a dilemma. All these uh, small bakers, big, small, across the country are dealing with, like, who's, who is it that's actually going to be eating this uh, love of Christ I put in this cake? That's did, what, you know. Did we vet them? But well, you see, at Christ and cakes, they don't care. You well, don't no, to they be let, let me say that you... If you are of a certain persuasion, uh, whatever you will call it, I don't know how to say it right or whatever, they, the same business but different name, and it's on, on the back side of the square. Not on the square, on the back side of the square. Come through back days called Backdoor or Cakes. And uh, if you need an order done up fast, you need something uh, done up, and you happen to be, you know, gales, light buys, or or gingers, if you're any of those and you still hungry for cake and need a cake, you go to Backdoor Cakes, owned by the same couple, Bill Dollar Grammys, uh, and they'll they'll set you up. They'll get what you need. Uh, and they'll also they'll pray for you a little bit. They'll say, we're praying for you. I mean, I'm, they, they still stand up for their religious belief, but they ain't going to not, you know, not serve somebody. And I'm sure they're praying for the day that maybe you need a cake and you end up coming through, you know, Christ and cakes in the front door. So, uh, but until that time, there's always backdoor cakes for any of your your weddings or your your dancing parties or your uh, whatever it is to do. You're gonna have to give that twenty five dollars back. Why, you why may give twenty five dollars back? It's a fine. Day. They well, could be like everybody else going to court and everything else. There's another baker I won't mention him by name. They still tied up in lawyer and everything else because they didn't want their cake t- to go to 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 a wedding. But it wasn't it wasn't a, a gay wedding. It was what Muslim wedding, something like that. They'll be in court forever. I don't think. I don't think they'll be in court forever. I think you could pretty. I think that's pretty clear cut. I think you could just not. If you don't give a Muslim a cake because they're Muslim, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I think some of this. Uh, well, they're talking to the lawyer still. I don't know if it's still in court or they're still doing something. Uh, but you know, once that happened, then all people of a certain persuasion had to go into their place and say, I'll make me a cake. If you're going to make these Muslims a cake, you're going to make me one. And, you know, they said, no, we didn't make a Muslim cake. That's the whole point. And they said, oh, well, you still going to have to make one. And, you know, that's just when everything started. So, wait, so people came in there had to support them for making a Muslim cake. And they said, no, no, we hate Muslims. And then they, they got said, it wrong. They oh, then, so they the whole were in story. there. Oh, I see. So they came in there because they were for Muslims. And said, we well, want a cake so, to support not, you. Not so much for them, just that, well, if they'll make a Muslim cake, of course – Let's be honest, it's hard. 
for people like it in the, in the local area to get a cake made for an event. Unless, they, you know, they happen to be bakers themselves, which I think that's the solution to all this problem. I think it all ends right there. If you just, just make your own cake. Well, yeah, if nobody, that's, I, that's just me, you know how, I ain't saying whether they should or shouldn't be served, I ain't saying that, I'm not getting in there, but I'll put it this way, if it was me, nobody make me a cake, I'd say to hell with you, and I'd get out some uh, sugar and some butter and some, you know, all of it, milk, eggs. So backdoor cakes. You may get my batter ready. So they will you can't serve. stop me. I wouldn't let somebody stop me for whatever reason. So, but you don't have to do that, thankfully, because of backdoor backdoor cakes. Yeah. Do Muslims have to go in the back door to backdoor cakes? I too? didn't ask about that. I guess that's not on them. I don't know. I can't speak for them. You'd have to call. If you're Muslim, you want cake that bad, call down there and find out. Hell, they may be taking them in the front. I don't know. So, they will serve gays, but out in the back where nobody else can see for their gay wedding. And they're going to pray for them, give them a, lay a guilt trip on them, make them feel othered. What do you mean, like guilt? They're praying for them. I, you know, and then, if that's making somebody feel othered, uh, othered I'm glad I'm an other because I want people praying for me. I do. For the best of me, yeah. And then the name of it is called Backdoor Case. Backdoor Case. Just where you get, you know, through the back door. Does this not sound like the like it's not civil so- rights and the, the black people had to come in the back? Oh, it ain't like it, No. And they I, can come in the front. They just can't get a cake unless they go around the back. If an yeah, if you, it's not so much on the belief. Obviously, it's not the beliefs of the the owners because you're getting the cake, ain't you? Everybody's getting the cake. It's just a lot of the people who. It's just how they treat you as, you, as you get the cake. I guess that's part of it, but that's because you know they don't want to make that other clientele uh, uncomfortable at Christ and cakes. You got a certain kind of clientele coming in there. What is it about cakes and hating gay people that go together? I don't know. To be honest with you, I really don't know. Cakes are supposed to bring people together, not drive us apart. It's what's happening all over the country, yeah. I think, I think obviously, the solution may be keep the government out of cakes. I don't mean to sound like a libertarian, but... Yeah. So, Jackie's sponsor today is the homophobic, anti-gay, hey, Christ in case. They didn't say they ain't that homophobic or whatever because that the same place, different name, on the other door, right behind her, on the outside of the square. Back door cakes, don't matter your persuasion, hey, which way you do anything. It don't matter. If you need a cake, go in and get it. Cake and a prayer is the way I look at it. I'm sure they pray for people come in the front, too. Don't need it as much, maybe, but still. You can't you can't keep that money. Huh? My sponsor this week, folks, how about how about this? Let me ask you a question. And I'd love to hear your answers. Yeah. Is it time for a little good news? I hope your answer is yes, because well, that's yeah. all I got. Yeah. If you're hoping I'm about to pull a bad news arrow from my quiver and shoot it through your head with my powerful bow, you're wrong. Mm. All I got is good news. You're going to, of course, remember the Easter Cottage. We talked about them last uh, week. Yeah. They were, they're back again. Kelly and Carter Tapper, yeah. formerly proprietors of the Christmas Cottage, until they went out of business. Christmas Cottage burned up your Christmas trees, but they needed some help. To make it until after Christmas, it's they didn't realize when they went into the Christmas tree burning business that nobody would burn any Christmas trees except for a couple weeks after Christmas. So to to keep that going year round, took a little forethought and planning that uh, that and they were broadsided by it. They were they did not expect oh, yeah. no cash flow the the rest of the year. 
So they they tried to burn Christmas uh, paraphernalia, the uh, presents before Christmas. They come up with a lot of good ideas. Yeah, did not really work out. Jackie's idea was, why don't you just burn garbage? I thought that just it was a zoning burn issue. It. Well, if you burn something year round, people got used for that. So That's unfortunately, they went out of business, and it's really heartbreaking. Well, Ironic, it is. It Alanis is. Morissette. They went out of business right, wow. right, uh, right the week of Christmas. So. Uh, they're back, living in an adobe mound with the uh, fire pit in the back. The Easter cottage in that uh, little adobe hut. They got some pictures of rabbits and Jesus on the cross and some jelly beans. You go in there, take a tour of Easter right up in your face. And then in the back, they will burn Easter baskets, eggs, jelly beans, plastic grass, what have you got left over from Easter, Whatever basically, you got that le- you don't left want to keep, over. which is always a bunch of mess. I know that, but how the hell, it still don't, if, when it ain't, well, Easter, Jackie, be, Easter comes and goes once a year, and then after that, what the hell are they going to do? They had a meeting planned with Mayor Bain Jekyll, Mayor huh? of Murfreesboro, my former friend, and he... Uh, wasn't going to be able to see him because of, of various appointments and vacations and lunches mm. until after Easter. And they thought, well, here we go again. But you know what? He bumped them ahead of the pack because he knew that they were hurting financially. And they got in to see him, and he gave them a license to not only burn Easter things, mm. but to burn whatever you got. All right. Well, yeah. You got sacks of garbage. Bring it down. There. Well, they all you see now, they can keep it open year round. They burn people needs to burn stuff up all the time. They're thinking about changing the name to Burning Cottage, that open year round. Makes more sense than Easter Cottage, unless one of their names is Easter. But what I know, not. The it's Kelly and Carter. I know Tepper. what the names are. I'm just saying. So that is the soon to be renamed. Burning cottage. Burning cottage. Now, see, you know, I got stuff I'll take down there to burn to get my business. Who doesn't done? like to see things burn? Hey, there's stuff always, there's always too much stuff lying around, no matter who you are, where you at. There always is. Load it up, haul it up, take it on down to burning cottage. That's a good sponsor. I'm glad to know that they. Now, they will still burn. Your Easter thing. Well, they'll burn anything. What they'll that? burn they, anything. Yeah, that's the point. As long as they, it don't matter what time of year it was. So, it's an Easter cottage. A story with a happy ending. Let me see here. They got their, uh, let's see. They got hours. They are open uh, seven. They open late because fires are prettier at night. So, they're open seven, seven to Seven ten. in the evening. Seven to ten. Yeah, seven to ten in the evening. They may have to stay open a lot later, longer than that. You seem like you could burn stuff all day. You make more money, but so be it. Well, they they're still working they've on the hours. They're gonna hire on. some employees. They got a they've got a lot of planning to do. Don't get me wrong. They're moving in the right direction as far as running the business. Absolutely, they'll catch on. If they if they figure this much out, they're gonna be fine. I ain't worried about them. Gonna let them. They figure out their own hours once they. So that is the burning cottage right now. Hours seven to ten. Let's see. It says Monday through uh, Saturday. They are not open on Sunday. And uh, down here at the bottom, it says no gays. What? God damn it. Says what? I'm going to have to give this $25 back. We, we've we been doing this for 40 minutes. We're minus $50. What is it about cakes and burning garbage that makes people hate gays? I don't know. I They're can't. not even, they don't even have Christian in their name. Why well, do they? Well, Easter's Christian. Easter is Christian. Why would you not burn a gay person, if a gay person, married or not, in a loving, uh, happy relationship or not, come down there with a sack of garbage and some plastic tubing, why would you not say, come on back, we welcome everybody here in the community? How is that against your religion? I'll say this, and I'll stand up behind this. I ain't taking no sides in this, but garbage is garbage. It don't matter who, who, you know, Who's bringing to burn it? I don't see how what difference that makes. Because uh, gay people, straight people, everybody, garbage is the same. It may smell a little different here and there, depending on what, what, where you live, what you're throwing away. But other than that, it's still garbage. Burn it up. 
I don't, I don't see the point in that. Don't make any better sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. Now, maybe you don't want to see a bunch of people kissing around your fire, but, I mean, that goes for straight couples, too, not just gay couples. I mean, that might be a little weird, like you're getting turned on by watching garbage burn. Well, That's gay or straight. All right, I don't want. So well, I, I don't, don't think see, just to take a line in do like old crushing cakes avoid the whole problem because that does not. That is your that uh, just is bad. Why that may is be it worse. just they, that may be worse? They still getting their stuff burned up, ain't they? But they gotta go around the back to do it. They may like going around that way. I don't know. Why would you? I don't know. I'm just saying, at least that's an option. Well, this way is just. I don't know what's going on, folks. But there's going to be garbage laying around and ain't getting burned up for a reason, and it's something stupid as this, so so be it. I don't know if Tennessee has any of these religious freedom laws like they got in Indiana. I don't know if anything's being challenged. Obviously, some people think it's against their religion uh, to have to serve Muslims, that unnamed bakery that's going to court, which I think they will find, uh, even in Tennessee, uh, is illegal. For some reason, though, people think they can still serve not gay people, can not serve gay people, and uh, I don't think uh, gays are a protected class here in Tennessee. If this is now, I tell you another reason this is a big situation. You wouldn't be here, you know. Nobody talks about this part of it. Is you know, because this is everywhere, Indiana, everywhere. Can you right? just stop now? No way. I listen. Hear me out. I had to sit there and listen to you. Listen to me out. All this problem's over. The same thing in, in this cake. And the thing is that everybody, everybody loves cake. It, okay. That's all. That's what point I'm saying. Oh, that's your point? If you had okay. what, I'll yeah. endorse it. Everybody does love that's cake. That's what everybody loves. It. Now, if you can't decide who don't like cake. Well, I don't think that's what they're trying. Well, that's what they're trying to do. No, oh, you no, know, you don't get no cake. Well, they're me. denying them. They ain't saying they don't like the cake. Well, yeah, if they didn't like it, they wouldn't be there to get it. But they, you see, <laughs> the cake people are getting extra pressure put on them because they have a product that everybody likes, everybody wants. So you're saying if it was something, some like if it was licorice or uh, licorice? Licorice? I'm sure there's going to be a gay person somewhere that's going to want something all the time. I ain't saying that. Or olives. I'm just saying it wouldn't be in the news much as it is all the time. Just cake. Because everybody loves cake. Who don't love it? And people love watching stuff burn. For the most part, yeah, depending on what you know what it is. Well, maybe these two homophobic businesses should get together and they can serve cake to gay haters while they burn their garbage. No, gay people can eat cake too. They can, like I said, go back door cake. That is... Just don't taste... It ain't like they're using worse ingredients for the gay people. It's the same stuff. It's the same kind they of cake. They have to go in well, the I, back. That's segregation. Well, they could That's not... They could say no gay... They could be like, oh, uh, uh, Easter College and say not at all, is all I'm saying. They're better than them because at least somebody getting some cake one way or the other. Governor of Indiana was on uh, talk shows this morning. He was on George Stephanopoulos. He's, of course, you know that the, uh, Indiana has the religious freedom bill he just signed into law. Which, That's uh, cake, too, right there, isn't it? I think that when they sign, even he's denying that it's cake. What? He's on George Stephanopoulos. George Stephanopoulos, yes and no answers. It's about cake. He's like, yeah, Hoosiers love cake. Or, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but. Yes, it's about cake. Man, Even though he's saying cake. it ain't about cake, it's about the government. It's about somebody wanting some cake, wanting to go in there and get some cake, no matter what kind of personal life I have. They still want that cake. He's he's saying, well, it ain't about cake. It's about the government coming in, overstepping their bounds, taking our religious freedom away, which is about, he's basically saying Obama. Well, yeah, of course. So we need these religious freedom laws to protect us from Obama. Not to keep people from having cakes. Now, if it happens to keep a few people from getting cakes. So be it, right? So that's, be that's it. Way, I can't the, control cakes. I'm the governor of Indiana. Well, yeah, he should have more important things to be concerned with, I think. 
They're saying he's thinking about running for president, too, isn't he? <laughs> well, I'm sure he was. Yeah. So he's doing some damage control, all these companies saying uh, we're pulling out. <laughs> And uh, he's saying, no, no, the, the, the media is is spinning this law to make it about cakes. The media, it's a gross mischaracterization of this law to say it's to keep gay people from having cakes. All we want is to keep Obama from, from putting padlocks on our church doors. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So don't paint us as crazy up here. We just want to make sure the government isn't taking away our religious freedom. Now, doesn't that sound sane to you? Yeah. So all these sports teams and sports, a lot of sports in Indiana. They got car racing. I don't, I'm don't. i sure the car racing will stay. But they got basketball, basketball saying, uh-oh. Lots of, lots of businesses saying, we can't come to Indiana. We I have our convention in Indiana. First of all, why did you want to go to Indiana? Second of all, yeah, really only the first part. Yeah. Now, I remember it wasn't too long ago, if you played basketball, if you were on a basketball team and they asked you about gay people, you'd say, uh-uh, no, sir. Yep. That's a lot of things in a short amount of time, I tell you. I heard that... Uh, uh, Whoever puts out the syndication package for one day at a time is thinking about changing. You know, like after 9-11, they took the uh, uh, Twin Towers out of, like, the Friends opening credits. Yeah. They're thinking about going in and digitally changing it so they don't live in Indianapolis anymore. What? Cleveland. I don't. You don't move them. But he's always in that apartment anyway. You wouldn't it didn't know matter. Difference. Yeah, you just, yeah. Don't matter where they live. That's a good theme song, talking about theme songs. Yeah, just, you know, certain length, that's one that you could probably, you know, could go on a little bit longer. One of those, you know, that song, Jefferson's, uh, all in the family, though, was the worst one. Just why they why they did that ever made me so mad. Well, I got to sit through that. Yeah, so that's Indiana gay stuff. We're moving right through the news. That ain't no sponsor, though. That's No, no that's our news. Uh, you want to talk about Ted Cruz a little bit? Uh, Ted mean, Cruz this week it was on... Uh, was, he, was he on ABC, too? I don't know. Run for president, you know, on everything. He's on everything. Yep. Ted Cruz, make, make him that's for good more, television. More, more chances to mess up, basically. It's all it is. The more places I go, the more chances mess. Now, that's debatable who says who messes up or whatever, but Ted Cruz, people are going to be saying he messed up. It's just unavoidable. That's, that's going to follow him around. Well, he said that he doesn't listen to rock music anymore since 9 11. Speaking of 9 11. 9 11. He does not. He didn't like the way rock musicians responded to 9 11. Yeah, getting high. That's all they did. Yeah. He likes how country performers responded to 9-11. Yeah. So all he listens to now, Ted Cruz, is country music. Well, it's a shame because he's right. He's right about that. Uh, but it's a shame he's got to listen to uh, a lot of the artists that he is listening to. Because country music, uh, I, even though he didn't know about before 9-11, I understand a lot of people wouldn't know about it before 9-11. But still, before 9-11, there's a lot of good, a lot of good country music. He should listen to. Yeah, he really jumped on the bandwagon at the worst possible time. That's what, yeah. I mean, there's some good stuff, and I appreciate the sentiment, but as far as, like, if sitting around listening to country music, I ain't going to listen to that, that time of year, huh? I mean, does he know about George Jones and Johnny Cash, Waylon Willie? That's a, yeah, there's a good one. Ray Price? Does he know about them? I, you'd have to ask him. I don't know. Did I, Some of them may have wrote a 9-11 song. I don't remember. It would have been a good one, 9-11, if all of them on the same song while they're still alive. Charlie Pride. Is he okay uh, with that? I like Charlie Pride, yeah. That would have been a good song, a George Jones 9-11 song. I don't know that that happened. 
We had Toby Keith's 911 song, which is yeah. not bad. It's all right. Yeah. Daryl Singletary had the song, uh, I think, that blamed Iraq on for 911. Well, yeah, that's not as good as Toby Keith's song. Toby Keith's song gets a lot of bad press, but to me, it's just an honest reaction. Like, look, this shit happened. I'd like to kick somebody's ass. Yeah. That's all he's saying. That's really. all he's saying. He didn't it ain't say that who. racist. It ain't. No, huh? He well, just I think said... he says we'll put a boot in your ass. But still. We was all mad. Everybody was mad. Yeah. Coldplay was mad. Maybe they didn't write a song about it to keep uh, Ted Cruz downloading their singles. What is it? Coldplay. Cold. Play. Play. Well, I don't know. Coldplay. I don't know what that is. It's a rock band. Oh, uh, well, of. yeah. Me and Ted Cruz ain't going to listen to that. Nope. I don't think Ted Cruz listens to any music. I think his iPod is filled up with the sh- sounds of shrieking children. Uh. To get himself socked up before he gives a big speech. Um, I don't see him listening to music yeah, any any which way. Uh, you ever see a picture with him on a, it's a cowboy hat on or something? He seems silly to me, like he's trying to do this, trying to do that. That'd be no way. When you run for president, that's what you do. You walk into it. You, go, you talk to one person, you say this, and then you walk in a room with other people and you say that. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, does anybody really believe Ted Cruz listens to, to country music? I guess we're at a place now where it we don't have to believe what politicians say, just well, as we long know, as they're saying it for our benefit. We know better, yeah. Well, what would you say, Rand, Rand Paul? Paul this week yeah. was talking to uh, Christians, yeah, some kind of Christian group, and he was kind of bashing uh, gay marriage. And he's supposed to be all libertarian freedom, for yeah, libertarian uh, and everything. Yeah. He's ne- I don't think he's been like super hot on it, but uh, he was saying now they got these people on this other kind of marriage, and we got uh, like what a weasel. I mean, he's just a weasel. I don't believe anything he stands for. Anything was he like? Yeah, he changed his tune every five minutes. And he's got all them college kids who don't like getting pulled over when they get a DUI in his corner, showing their ID when the cops. And then they ain't going to like this gay marriage stuff. Like his daddy, if his daddy said something, he'd say something that made sense. And then he'd say something crazy. Yeah, crazy as hell, yeah. Now, Rand Paul will say something that makes sense. And then he'll say something that's fucking weasel. Hey, watch your mouth. But yeah, I know what you mean. I will take sense and crazy over sense and weasel any day of the week. Unless unless I can see weasel better, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. So you got Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, two weasels. It's basically uh, Roger Rabbit times. I forget their names. I should look that. Well, Rand up. Paul always had a tough, tough, you know, uphill climb with with uh, you know religious uh, people. I always thought, yeah, right. You can tell he doesn't believe in anything. He don't believe in it. What was the purple thing he believed in years ago? Right. Yeah, he got in trouble in Awful college. Yeah. Purple, uh, something. Something crazy. Rand Paul don't love Jesus. I'll tell you that right now. He don't love Jesus. Why no? That one bakery that we ain't going to talk about wouldn't give cake to a Muslim might not give cake to Rand Paul because they know he don't love Jesus. Well, um, yes, you know. Now, backdoor cakes might let him come in the back way. Backdoor cakes give him whatever he wanted. Yeah, that's what it's for. But I don't know if Christing cakes would let him in. Yeah. This is not going to stand. This will be like there will be a court order, and they'll have to uh, open up the front eventually. And we'll see. It may be in court for years, like everything else. Who and knows? Maybe there's probably protesting right now at at the Easter Cottage, Burning Cottage. Well, since you said something on here, oh, I'm sure they're I'm sure they're massing at the gates. But at school, when they get done with the protest, maybe they can just throw their signs in the fire. Yeah. Place to deal with that. Yeah. So that's Ted Cruz and Rand Paul are weasels. We're really burning through the news here, Jack. Ruby Ruby always going to run. He's going to sign up. Uh, he's going to sign up. He's going down to the place where you sign up on yep. April thirteenth. Yeah, I heard the rumor on Politico. Shows you how bored I have been checking out Politico. They say Marco Rubio getting ready to run. 
going to announce April 13th. This is a good time because if, you, if your competition is Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, right now you may get a little headway till somebody else gets in, in it, you know. Well, I don't think Rand Paul's in it yet. Not officially, yeah. Not officially. Yeah. But he's talking to Christian groups. For him, that might as well be an official declaration. Well, he wouldn't be doing it otherwise, yeah. Jackie, I have one final thing I'd like to, to talk about today. Yeah, well. This is from uh, Al.com, Alabama.com, Alabama news site. On computer? Yeah, I don't know how they figured out how to get that up there, but yep, it's on the computer. And uh, title is Hank Williams Jr. Gives Boost to Alabama Deer Hunting Bill. All right, yeah. Al, uh, Hank Williams Jr., I guess, lives part-time in Alabama, and uh, he went down there, spoke to the Alabama legislature, uh, wearing his khakis and uh, some sort of short-sleeved button-down shirt. And I'd just like to read to you from this uh, Al.com article. Feel free to chime in by Mike Kaysen. A bill to repeal the state law restricting the use of corn or other bait as an aid in deer hunting yeah. passed a Senate committee today with an endorsement from country music legend Hank Williams Jr. It's good to see him getting involved. Yeah. He's not always just been on a national level. He's always motivated to get, yeah, say, say his piece, yeah. Williams, an avid hunter known for singing about the outdoors and rural life. Yeah. See, does does Ted Cruz even know about Hank Williams Jr.? Does he know about a country boy can survive? Does he well, know he, about all my rowdy friends coming over tonight and they're settling down? Before 9-11, he ain't know. He don't know it. Now, Hank Williams Jr., I'm sure, has a 9-11 song. Oh, of course he does. He got a, an album full, I bet. I don't, I don't know any of them. Well, I know, you know, the, there was so much stuff coming out, you can't listen to every 9-11 country song. There's no way anybody could. Oh, you should get Sirius XM. They got a country uh, 9-11 music song channel. It's all country 9-11 songs. Yeah. Some gospel. Williams, an avid hunter known for singing about the outdoors and rural life, said there are times when it's good to have the option to use bait. So I guess this is about deer baiting where you put out some corn and there's a fader and it's a little easier to shoot them when they're busy having, Eating, yeah. having their lunch. Got the head down, yeah. And he said, it's good to have that option to use bait at times, such as when a hunter takes along a child, yeah. a disabled person, well, yeah. or an injured veteran, and wants to make sure they have a chance to kill a deer. Well, yeah, they should have a chance to kill a deer as just much as anybody else. I understand that. They used to have a program that years and years ago I give donate money to it, bring you know school children. Well, they weren't regular school. You know what I mean. Like, you know, what do you call it? Golf special children, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, the, the backdoor kids, I think they called well, it. Well, whatever name you want to call it, that's fine. But, you know, they go on a little hunting thing, and they, same thing, they, they could go regular hunting. They tie that deer up and let each one take a shot at it, you know. And I'm sure knowing how charitable Hank Williams Jr. is, I'm sure he's had stuff like that on his Alabama property all the time. Yeah, where they just tie it up, hold it down. What have you got to do? Wait it. Child needs to have his first kill, you know, one way or the other. Uh, if you help him out a little bit, you know, you wean. It's like training wheels on a bicycle. Same thing. Yeah, you don't want to. And and the veterans, after all they've been through, and then there's somebody saying, well, no, nah, Veterans nah. should have a right to kill any animal it wants to. If you, I think that's true. When he Definitely. comes back from war. Especially disabled veterans. Of course. You know, if if that's what it takes to make them feel better, then you know, put put that's uh, therapy. Put a bunch of corn down on the ground. Not put cruelly. It. Not we're not saying they should be able to like torture cats and no, dogs. No, no, just go hunting for deer. Put corn everywhere, everywhere, where if it's a disabled veteran or a special chill, ch children uh, with with a gun. You put corn down everywhere for them. That's yeah, good for him. I'm glad. Old uh, Bo Cephas got in there and did the right thing. Good. Senator Tom Watley of Auburn, Republican, yeah. Bill's sponsor, 
said deer cause millions of dollars in damage in vehicle accidents every year. That's that, true. That's true, yeah. And if they was busy eating out of a feeder and uh, chowing down on corn on a cob, they might not be running out in front of your SUV every morning. They're easier to kill, too. Fatter. You that, might be yeah. able to avoid You see them coming because they're going to have trouble jumping out in the road because yeah. they got all these feeders around. Full corn, yeah. Watley says it's the fifth year he has tried to get the legislation passed. Wow. Tom Watley must be an awful shot. Yeah. God damn it, I gotta get something through this year. So he he was friends with Hank Williams Jr. got him to come help pass it. Yeah. I guess they're friends. It doesn't say if they're friends, it just say it's the fifth year. But maybe they're buddies, maybe they, they sit around going like, you know, this'd be easier if we could just throw some sandwiches down on the ground or something. It's fun sitting up in this tree, but I'll tell you what, it's cold. I need to get home. If we could just put something down that deer like to eat. Corn. Corn. Yeah. And you know what? Let me talk to the boys up on the hill, see what we can get through. Man, if anybody take care of it, it's him. Five times now, he tried to get past five this, but it's the first time Hank Williams Jr. showed up, First right? time Hank Williams okay, well, That's see, your problem there you right go. there. If you'd have had him on the first try, you wouldn't have had to go back four more times. You need both Cephas agrees in the wheels of government. That's right. The bill would also remove restrictions on using bait to hunt feral swine. <laughs> yeah. But it would not affect restrictions on using bait to hunt turkey. Alabama legislature. The Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources has not taken a position on the legislation. Controversial. They know better. They know to stay, stay out, out of, of the stay out of it. Yeah. They got their own stuff they got to worry about. Yeah. <clears throat> the bill passed the Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry Committee by a 9-2 to vote. It goes to the Senate. Senators Paul Sanford, Republican of Huntsville, and Larry Stutz, it's a great name, Republican of Sheffield, voted against it. This country boy doesn't need the bait, Sanford said. Yeah. William said he didn't need to use bait either, so I guess they got into a little pissing contest. Folks, if you can find YouTube video of Hank Williams Jr. talking to the Alabama legislature, I would love to see it. Hey, look for it early. I wanted to see I it. I tried to I find should... it. I could not find it. Maybe some of y'all have magic YouTube fingers and can pull this I'd video I'd watch up. it. Yeah, that will be it. our clip of the week for if several you can find weeks. find it, yeah. For, that'll be a permanent clip of a week. Because just reading about it is, is awesome, but seeing it, there's nothing like seeing it. Now, I want to say something here. Yeah, I'm glad we're, we're about done here, ain't we? We're about through talking. I have a few I'm, remarks here. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty much the old wish. I want to say my remarks now. We say a lot of stuff about politics on here. We say it, don't, it ain't worth a darn politicians. The weasels call them everything else. You know, it's, it's easy in this day and age to be disgusted with how politics works and how people, how they treat one another and just how awful things are. You you won't go home, bury your head under the pillow, and never come up sometimes. I know that feeling. But I'm glad we're ending this uh, podcast, podcast with uh, uh, an example of when government comes together and does what it's supposed to. Sometimes it works, folks. This is a perfect example. Look, you know, even a guy, like you said, they're having a, a pay-pay contest or whatever. See, that's, that's, that, keep it at that level when you're arguing and stuff. Keep it right there. Yeah. This country boy doesn't need debate. Yeah. And then Hank Williams Jr. says, oh, I don't either. Yeah. That is government at work, folks. That's it right there. And, you know, and. Crossing that, the aisle, even though they're both Republicans. And now, you know, all the special needs children going to be able to kill as many animals as they want. Or poor our veterans gonna be able to kill many deers at these two. Well, they still able. they still got to make the shot. He's just a deer gonna be. Yes, they you know if they can't get it after the corn's down, they probably shouldn't be out there. I'm gonna say that now. No offense. Hank Williams Jr. closed his remarks to the committee with a reference to one of his father's most famous songs. Well, and this is beautiful. Yeah. This is like if they were making 1776 the musical, this would have its own song. Yeah. About this moment. Hank Williams Jr. said, Long ago, an American Indian armed with a bow and arrow might have used corn to attract a deer. Oh, he did. Yeah. Love corn. That Indian might have been named Kalijah, Williams said. 
<laughs> Look there. Oh, classy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'll bet he was talking to them, and he was talking about corn. He was talking about deer. And they were like, when's he going to mention his daddy? And everybody, But Hank Williams Jr., if nothing else, is a showman. Bless his heart. He knows he, he gives the, the, the public what they want. You know, so he had them on the edge of their seat. Like, when's it coming? When's it coming? Right at the end. Now. And then he's like, in closing, I'd like to reference a song my daddy sung. Yep. After the committee meeting, Williams spent time posing for pictures with lawmakers, lobbyists, pages, legislative staffers, and others at the state house. And bless his heart. I will take footage of that. If you can't find footage of him speaking, if somebody just posted up on like Instagram video, like I met Hank Jr. today, I'll take that. Anything you can find on this, I'm fascinated. I yeah. really want to see it. It's it's uh, like a civics class, folks. See, that's a shame. We just talked about it, didn't we? And you found this one little article about it, and and we know we'll probably video and everything else of that, and can't find it. It's, here's a perfect example of when politics works for the betterment of of mankind, and you can't hear nothing about it. Where? Why is this not on CNN? Why Pedal. is this not on MSNBC? Should be on C-SPAN Fox. all day long. Why ain't it on Fox News? Everybody's slacking on this. Here's a perfect example. You know, we'll give a little hope to some people out there. And we say, ain't no good news. And here we've had, well, some of the good news didn't turn out so good. But this Hank Williams Jr. trying to get deer to eat corn so they can be shot by disabled veterans and special needs children. Yeah. It's good news. It touches your heart. It shows, like I said, it gives you hope on both ends. It gives you hope that, look, politics can work. And let's say you special needs children or disabled veteran, it gives you hope that you're going to kill a deer this weekend. It could be just sick people, too. They don't have to be veterans. It could just be regular Yeah, sick I'm sure people. there's plenty of people that didn't necessarily go to war or sick, you know. Just tired, to, yeah. tired people. I can't walk for so long. I tell you, I'm up in age. I don't hunt like I used to, but, you know, if I take maybe a sack of corn with me and sit there, it'd be like fishing, you know, just sit back, relax. Do an old man some good, as well as disabled veteran or special needs child. Shouldn't take a right to kill something away from all all them people. They, they, they didn't do nothing to they deserve that. They didn't do that. nothing to deserve that. Sometimes you got to bend the rules just a little bit. I know, you know, good Lord in heaven, he made deer fast, can run, you know, get out of the way, but sometimes we need to help out somebody like that. They're at a disadvantage, and if they want to hunt, we need to put that old deer at a disadvantage. He, God, God may not have been thinking we made deer. He, he was like, I'll, I'll make deer fast so, like, a wolf can't get it. But he didn't think about the poor disabled poor, soldiers. Yeah. God had a lot on his mind. I ain't questioning Don't him. question his wisdom, and I I don't mean to question it He's, either. He made deer fast, and he made us smart enough to figure out we can give them some corn. Yeah. That's how, that's how nature works right there. Uh, if deer could talk. See, though, I will say this. I they, guess say, they say, mm-mm, this corn tastes good. <laughs> What was his last words? That's del- delicious corn. Best corn I ever had. It's also you get making them happy when you, you know. They, like cake. They, they're going out on good, yeah. Corn is cake for deer. Yes, he is. Corn is cake for deer. That's, de- that's the most delicious thing for deer. And deer don't care whether you uh, gay, straight, or whatever. You put that corn down, it's going to eat it. And then you shoot it right between the eyes, shoot it, you know, heart shot, and kill it quick. But that's the way I'd, if I'd, you know, if that's how you had to go out. They said one of the states just brought back, what is it? Uh, firing squad firing in Utah. Squad. Give them a slice of cake. Get them distracted and, and full of cake? Yep. Well, that ain't so bad. I think that's the way, to, if I had to be shot down dead uh, in cold blood uh, out in the woods or anywhere else, Give, give me a slice of cake. I won't go out on thinking on how good that tastes. Like I said, cake, corn, deer for cake, uh, for deer. Cake, corn is cake for corn deer. Corn is cake for deer, folks. And uh, corn is cake for deer. Yeah, corn is cake for deer. And I can't think of any th- a more beautiful way to go out on this podcast than with that sentiment. Yeah, I, you know, a good positive uh, message, and I, I, I glad to hear uh, people good. Citizens like Hank Williams Jr. getting in there and helping 
helping them wheels turn like you said, yo. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you get through these podcasts and you want to cry because you're sad, and sometimes you won't get through it and you won't cry because you're happy. Happy, yeah. It's, you know, it's about time we had a happy one. That's good. Glad to hear it. May not be happy for the deer, but. Well, they get the cake, corn. They corn get cake. the, yeah, they're happy for a little bit. They're right. That's right. That's how they go out. They don't They don't get sad later, like, oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. They eat the cake, uh, the corn, ca- cake, corn, and then they get shot and they're dead. So their last thought was, God damn. Good corn. Yep. You didn't have to blast me, but. You know, good corn. Yeah, good corn. That's it then, right? Yeah, I thought, right. I thought that pause was us. No, you got I take, thought good corn was a way to good way go, to go out. No, you, uh, iTunes. All right. Uh, Facebooks. Uh huh. Chot Chotish. Mm-hmm. And uh, what? Twitters. All of them together. Rates and reviews. Thank you kindly. Tell everybody this is the one you want to share with somebody. You know, sometimes <laughs> you may not want to share. A, a new podcast with somebody because they always fight. may be the one. This, this is the one right this here. This is a positive. I, I, put a, I'm feeling good about this. Something one. good out into the world. Uh, this is the one I'm happy. To, I'm happy I took part in this one today. Most times I care less. Today I'm glad I was here. Yeah. So. That's uh, that's, that's it. That's the podcast. Glad I was here. Now, what did you say earlier you want to go out? We got to give this $25 back. Which one? Both of them. You do? I, back door. It ain't the same. What do you mean? It ain't the same. If, they get, I, if I want cake, dear don't care whether you give it corn in the front or the back. If you want cake, you want cake. Put too much thought into it as far as I'm concerned. 